Do you know what my solar panels think about all this snow? Here's what they think. My name is Reese and I designed and installed a solar array on my house. And a lot of people ask me, what happens when it snows? What do you do about it? Well, in this video, I'm going to answer that question. I'm also going to explain why I don't really worry about it and why I don't think you should worry about snow on your solar panels either. And also I want to cover a surprising side effect of having snow on your solar panels, especially when your panels are up on your roof. I live in Pennsylvania and I have 48 solar panels. It snows here and so the big question is what do I do when it snows? The answer is I don't do anything. Almost all the time there's no reason to try to clear the snow off the solar panels in my case because maybe you could see here there's an angle and the snow simply slides right off. Even if you try really hard you can't get the snow to stick on a slanted piece of glass. Just think about putting an ice cube on glass. It's not going to stick. Okay, that's a little bit of snow, but maybe you're asking, what do you do when you get a lot of snow on your solar panels? This is a screenshot from my phone from the monitoring system that I use, and it shows the month of December. You can see that there's a gap in the middle of the month. Now this gap is because of snow. Back in December, there was a giant snowstorm that hit the area, and it put about 17 inches of snow on the ground and on the solar panels. Our solar production took a big hit. For five days, we produced zero kilowatt hours, and then you can see on the 21st, it came back to life. I was actually on a trip and I missed the entire snowstorm and when I came back there was no snow on the solar panels. So they cleaned themselves completely. The reason why a lot of snow doesn't matter is because of the bottom layer. It actually doesn't matter if you have a lot of snow or a little bit of snow. What matters is what's happening between the glass and all of that snow. When the sun comes out you're going to get some warming effect that's going to happen between the glass of the solar panel and that snow and then things start to slide. And it doesn't really matter if there's a lot of snow or a little bit of snow. Things are going to start moving if there's an angle. Actually when you have a lot of snow and you have all that mass and things start to move it gets really interesting. To give you a sense of how warm a solar panel can get in the winter, I brought out my thermal imaging camera. This thing connects to my phone. It's about freezing temperature outside but it's very sunny. As a point of reference this is what I'm pointing my thermal imaging camera at. You can see the snow on the right and as I move left you can see the temperatures really start to skyrocket. I'm recording this at the sunniest part of a winter day and the highest I saw on the panels was about 98 degrees Fahrenheit which is about 36 degrees Celsius and at these surface temperatures even though the air may be freezing snow doesn't stand a chance. Maybe you've wondered like me, do snow covered solar panels produce power? Should I bother to clean the snow off my solar panels? And what if I live in a northern climate? Well, I'm going to answer those, but first. I want to say thank you to Audible for sponsoring this video. I had mentioned that I was away during a big snowstorm. I was actually in Florida and Audible was great for that long drive from Pennsylvania to Florida and back. I even bumped up the speed setting so I could squeeze in even more listening. And on long drives like this, I like good fiction and Brandon Sanderson was my choice on this trip. Audiobooks are great because you can listen while you're working on projects, relaxing before bed, cleaning the kitchen, or even shoveling the snow. And if you're like me, you like listening and learning while working on a task at the same time. Audible has thousands of audiobooks and titles available for you to choose from so you can find that audiobook you've been wanting to listen to. They also have thousands of popular podcasts and Audible original content found nowhere else. So if you're thinking about getting Audible, you've got nothing to lose. New members can get 30 days for free to try it out. Just visit audible.com slash frugal or text frugal to 500 500. Again, audible.com slash frugal or text frugal to 500 500. Another question I've wondered about is can solar panels produce power even when they're covered in snow? Well, in my case, the answer is yes, but it really depends on how much snow is covering them and really how much sunlight is able to get through to those solar cells. Here's a recent example. The other day it snowed about two inches. It was overall a cloudy, snowy day and we were making zero kilowatts of power. But then the sun came out for about a minute or two before getting cloudy again. 
I went back to take a look at our monitoring system and you could see on the playback the exact moment when the sun comes out. The two inverters output a total of about 64 watts of power, which is really small, but if the sun kept shining, that would go up. Again, it shows you that sunlight can go through that snow and start to produce power. But something interesting happened in this case, even though it went back to zero. The panels warmed up enough and the snow started to slide off. And even though it got cloudy again, the chain reaction had already begun. Notice you can see the snow inching off the panels. On another occasion, it snowed about one or two inches and the sun came out with the panels totally covered in snow. And at one point I measured almost 700 watts. So yes, sunlight can get through some of that snow and you can make a little bit of power, but really the big thing is that the panel is gonna warm up so that snow can start to slide off. Another question I have when it snows is, should you even bother to try to clear the snow off your solar panels? If I had a ground mount or it could get to them easier, I probably would. We've had lots of snowstorms this winter, so I decided to give it a try, even though I only have the panel cleaning attachment for my super long extension pole. So not only was it a bit dangerous standing on top of an eight foot ladder, I didn't feel like I was making much progress. And I was also trying to be very careful not to scratch the panels. So my summary afterward was that I didn't need to bother and the sun was going to do a much more effective job than me anyway. And also consider that even if I miss out on a few days of winter solar production, which is really the lowest time of the year anyway, the monetary value isn't worth the risk of falling off a ladder. Now you might think, Pennsylvania, is solar worth it there? That's too far north. Or maybe you live farther north than I do and you're wondering, is it even worth it? I've told many people that I have solar panels and it's not uncommon to get the response of, it's too cloudy, it's too snowy here. Solar's only good for places like Florida and Arizona. I have a friend who teaches solar technology and he once told me, if you see green on the trees and the plants, there's solar energy right there at that location. Now, when you consider solar panels, especially if you have net metering with your power company, you have to remember to look at the big picture, the annual picture, because if you live in a Northern climate, you have more sun in the summer and less in the winter. On the National Renewable Energy Lab website, they have a helpful sun chart. This is showing solar irradiance, how much sunlight on a yearly basis is going to these locations. Remember, this is an annual viewpoint. So for example, I know I get enough sun in Pennsylvania, but even if you go way up into Canada, there isn't a huge drop off in sunlight. This is because in the summer, you have many more hours of sunlight because of the tilt of the earth. So if you're in a place that gets a lot of snow, you're probably getting the bulk of your solar production in the summer anyway. Now, what do you do if you get a lot of snow? I mean, snowmageddon. Maybe you're worried about solar panels breaking. Should you worry about that? Unless you're in some very extreme situation, you probably don't need to worry about it. Take a look at these specs for my solar panels. On the data sheet, there's a listing for snow load. You can see these panels are rated to handle up to 50 pounds per square foot. In Pennsylvania, where we live, houses are built under the code to withstand 40 pounds per square foot. So if it snowed that much, you'd really need to worry about your roof collapsing, not your solar panels breaking. So I don't worry about snow or clearing it off or about snow breaking my solar panels. But remember at the beginning, I mentioned a surprising side effect of snow on solar panels, especially if they're up on your main roof of your house. You might be inside doing whatever, and then outside it sounds like this giant earthquake is happening, and it could be quite shocking the first few times it happens. I captured this on video, and you may not even be able to notice, but there is so much force that the tripod is shaking about 30 feet away. So if you get solar panels on your house and you get snow, expect these type of avalanches every so often, and you'll have to do some extra shoveling and maybe even have to move some of your favorite plants. Let me know if you have any more questions about solar and check the video description for any resources.